Molly want to laugh? An all-new AFV Animal Edition starts right now. They told the ambitious bird watchers that Crocodile Cove was the best place to see rare wetland birds. Still, they wondered, why was it called Crocodile Cove? to America's Funniest Home Videos, Animal Edition. And now, a man who wouldn't hurt a fly, but he has been known to give them a stern talking to from time to time, Alfonso Ribeiro. Hello to all and welcome to AFE Animal Edition, the show that knows that our tenderest moments in life and our biggest belly laughs all involve our animal friends. I think they feel the same way. Like when a cat suddenly runs into another room for no reason. I think it's because they want to laugh at us, but they think it would be rude to do it in front of our faces. <laughs> Max loved the soothing sounds of a thunderstorm. The pitter-patter of the raindrops. The cacophony of the rolling thunder as it clapped in the distance. Max didn't care for the lightning as much, especially when it got close. Hey, 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 dude, dude, hey, no, no, dude, no. And it was at this point the Robinsons realized it would be so much easier to install an automatic garage door opener rather than try and teach a bear to do it. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the track was a very confused jockey. What the hell? Look, puppy, she has a flower. Oh, no. Oh, yes. The crooked frame was driving Moo Moo's crazy. It had to be fixed. That's better. But now what? Moo Moo's hadn't thought this out fully. Moo Moo's? Get down, Moo Moo's. It was true. The tastiest oats were always at the bottom. Cool, they bought Bud a pony. Sure, to you and me, it was little and cute and cuddly, but to Bud, it was ginormous. What do you think? Hey, come here, hey. Where are you going? I don't want my money back. Mud, whether they're digging in it, rolling in it, or gleefully tracking it through your kitchen, they just can't seem to get enough of it. But hey, it's like they say, being an animal's a dirty job, but someone's got to do it. <laughs> Marley's owner is giving her a piece of her mind because she didn't want Marley to play in all that mud. I am very angry with you, Marley. I told you no. What's wrong with you? I said no. Seriously? Yeah, I'm not sure she's getting through to Mark. Yeah. in your nose, in your ears, in your eyes. The track is listed as fast today, but that patch of mud in the home stretch could prove problematic. <laughs> Fun, but problematic. The whole family agreed. It just didn't feel like autumn until Muggsy performs his spot-on impression of a pig. In her defense, she was trying to clean up the mess she made. But she only had one towel. And she quickly discovered it was a heck of a lot more fun to make the mess than it was to clean it up. You ought to see my house on family game night. Oh, yeah, every Saturday like clockwork, I taught all the dogs in my neighborhood how to play Clue, Monopoly, Risk. I used to play Hungry Hungry Hippos with real hippos. My wife hated how the house looked afterwards. Ooh. So, you know, now I just play with the neighborhood dogs. He's going for his foursies. Three fours, not bad, but maybe the cat can help. That's what I'm talking about. 
nothing like poker night at the pasture. It's a friendly game, but they play for oats. You know, just to keep it interesting. Brownie's sitting pretty with a pair of aces. Ooh, Nugget has a nothing hand. Hope he didn't bet the ranch. Looks like they're playing a game of horse. Of course they are. Or do horses play a game of people? That's P-E-O. These guys are really good. Check it out. They're playing past the pigs with an actual pig. He's going for double oinkers. Ooh, so close. Dragon against child. Ready, set, go. The lizard has his own strategy. He chose to wait until he saw the perfect opportunity. And thus far, that opportunity has not presented itself. You're going down, Lulu. You know, Stratego is really his game. Oh, good job. The cow says, mmm. The chicken says, cluck, cluck, cluck. The duck says, quack, quack, quack. Hey, dude, you're killing me with those paws. Can you be a little gentler? Let's play some Twister. Apparently, Max is going to play. OK, all right, let's spin it. Right foot on green. Right foot on green, guys. That's not fair. Dogs can't see green. Only blue and yellow. Max, you're not very good at this game. Max can't see green. <laughs> People will tell you it is best to let sleeping dogs lie. Good advice, I guess. Although sometimes you don't really have a choice. Hi, Tug. Hi, Tug. Hi. Hi. Hmm. Tug's so tired, he's not responding to his own name. Tug. Hi, Tug. Maybe that's too informal. Try Mr. Tug. Mr. Tug. Mr. Tug. Hi, Mr. Tug. Mr. Tug is what we call a deep sleeper. And now, Maggie the Beagle will demonstrate a classic dog move, the I meant to do that face. <laughs> there it is. <sighs> Everyone said they sort of looked alike. But then, they even started sounding alike. Soulmates. Sometimes dinner is just so good, you fall asleep in the dinner tray. <laughs> I'd be tired too if I weighed like six ounces and ate a whole pan of muffins. He has a belly full of dough. Is that yummy? Is that so good? Oh, so yummy. Oh, so good. Norman, it's time to get up. Norman does not like to get out of bed. That's not, come on, time to get up. Come on, come on, wake up. Come on, wake up. He was pretty sure he had a do not disturb block with the hotel. Norman, gotta go outside. Come on, come on, wake up. Fortunately, he's got a little trick up his sleeve for moments just like this. To get off. The fake snore. Are you still sleeping? No, your, your eyes are open. You can snore all you want. No fake snoring. Your eyes are open. Let's go. Harriet claimed she loved all her dogs equally and didn't have a favorite. However, Bob didn't believe her for a second. <laughs> All animals are amazing, but some animals are most amazing at a distance. They're amazing way over there, less amazing when they are real close to me, and even less amazing when you're having a close encounter of the animal cat. What's this man poking at in that muddy water? Oh, nothing. Just a snake so large it could crush him and swallow him whole. But some people don't realize the danger they're in until it jumps up and tries to bite them in the face. <laughs> <laughs> Ever
Ever since pharmaceutical companies started adding eucalyptus to their cold medicines, it became hard to keep the koalas out of the pharmacies. We can't get out the car. And they claim the best thing about living out in the middle of nowhere is that you don't have to lock your doors. Right about now, he's probably hoping his roommate Steve is out hiking a trail or something. That was a bit scary. There he goes. Whew. Maybe he's going to try and find Steve. Over there. It's all good. Just so long as he doesn't take their favorite chair. chair. Looks like the lion put some holes in our chair. Could have been worse. You could have been sitting in it. As much as I love sports, I also love me a quirky, unusual mascot, especially when an animal is involved. In fact, there's a school in North Carolina whose mascot isn't exactly an animal you associate with the Tar Heel State. Is the mascot for Campbell University, A, PD the polar bear, B, Gaylord the camel, C, Georgie the giraffe, or D, Marty the mollusk? Think you know? Well, I'll tell you in our mascot moment when AFE Animal Edition continues. In Bowie's Creek, North Carolina, you'd be hard pressed to happen upon either a dromedary or a Bactrian. But the bucolic campus of Campbell University is the home of the fighting camels. And their prideful and steadfast mascot is Gaylord the Camel. And believe me when I say Gaylord's fans are diehard. With his most devoted followers deeming themselves the camel crazies. Gaylord has been the face of Campbell University since 1934, and he has been leading the charge ever since. It's a fact. Gaylord has stopped. Always there with the assist, or taking it to the hole all on his own. And if one camel is great, then two are even better. And so entered Gladys, Gaylord's cheery friend and confidant. You know how the saying goes, behind every great camel is another camel. Together, they make quite the team. Give me a woo woo, Gaylord. Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Gaylord and Gladys embody the spirit of Campbell University, and the excitement they inspire is fantastic. Let's go! At the end of the show, we are going to award $1,000 to the clip we enjoyed the most. Could be the funniest, the most unique, or even the strangest. So see which video you like the most, and we will see if we pick the same one. Okay, so. I think I finally have the answer to how much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. First, you have to answer the could part. Could he? <laughs> All right, well, well, let's assume he could. Then we define chuck. I mean, is the woodchuck throwing the wood or simply just moving the wood? Right? <sighs> I guess I'll tell you later. I do have the answer, but right now it sounds like it's time for another episode of What's That Dog Barking At Now? <laughs> The dog's name is Pretty. I don't know what the bear's name is. But Pretty is pretty darn brave. I'm guessing Pretty's family no longer minds her barking in the middle of the night. I mean, she's protecting the homestead. Good dog. There is nothing I love better than a good heist movie. Ocean's Eleven, The Lavender Hill Mob. Only thing better would be if they made one starring animals. The stories are all around us. In fact, tonight we'll be counting down the top 10 great animal heists. Let's kick it off with the bottom five. Number 10, the Turkey 10 Spot Heist. 
They named him Aaron Burr because he was so obsessed with that Hamilton. <laughs> Number nine, the canine cat chow Larson. And in broad daylight, too. Where are you going with my cat chow? Hey, that's my kitten chow. Get back here. You bring my kitten chow back. Number eight, the masked mobile phone bandit. Number seven, Waylon the Knife. Give him what he wants or else stabby stabby. Stabby stabby. Number six, a perfect heist happens when no one is expecting it. All is calm, and then he goes in to purloin the granola bar. <laughs> We will continue our countdown a little later in the show. We are all weary of the things that hide in the shadows, in the woods, or in the closet. But sometimes the things hiding in plain sight do the most damage. You ever stepped on a rake? Ouch. And it was hiding right there in plain sight the whole time. Like, bah! <laughs> yep, there was a snake in the garage. And there is a man in the garage. And while the snake may or may not see the man, we can tell the man does not see the snake. And now there is a cat in the garage. The cat does see the snake, but chooses not to get involved. Hey, don't tread on him. Some homes have guard dogs, but between you and me, a guard goose gets the job done too. <laughs> Look at her. Every hunting season, he got a little bit smarter. No matter what he claimed, they just knew he wasn't washing his hair regularly. Oh, so Eddie wanted to hide, but he couldn't resist the lure of a little pawball. <laughs> hide and seek in the Hanson house was often an all day affair. Caesar was a great dog, just not very good at the game. They would knock on the wall, whistle and Caesar still couldn't find them sometimes these sessions could last for days and now it's time for the animal news network fetching you the daily news but with no slobber on it I'm Alfonso Ribeiro, and here now, the animal news. Baseball fans were outraged when Finn the Bat Dog was seemingly disrespected by a home plate umpire. It was the bottom of the second inning, and Finn the Bat Dog was taking his position to perform his Bat Dog duties. The fans love Finn. And then, this happened. Sean the fans were outraged. job, ref! Boo! Sorry, I got a little emotional there. Sort of lost my perspective as a news anchor. But that just wasn't right. <clears throat> and in tourism news, Baboon Resorts International announced today that they are suspending their policy of employing baboons as bell captains, maintenance crews, and desk clerks. Admitting that assigning hotel hospitality responsibilities to primates with a history of inhospitable behavior... This dude is getting in the way of me going to the bar. ...was not the smartest idea in the world. And he's really scary. The resort apologized to past guests for... I don't like this. ...the stalking... Please don't come this way. ...the intimidation... Oh, my God, they're going to, like, surround me. ...and the overall poor service... <laughs> 
Baboon Resorts International plans to rebrand with an entirely new name and staff. No! So be on the lookout for Nile Crocodile Resorts International, opening next spring. Some good news for those of you currently huddling in a cellar because you thought that was a tornado you saw. Turns out it was not a violently rotating column of air. Nope. Turns out it was just one of those cylindrical swarms of mosquitoes swirling around. So that's a relief. No, wait. That's still bad, right? Looks like someone should head back to town and get a whole lot of calamine lotion. And now it's time for an Animal News Network fake fact. Fish that don't keep up with the school they're swimming in end up being left behind and forced to attend summer school. Not true! I'm Alfonso Rivero wishing you all good night, good luck, and good animal news. And now, quite possibly the most interesting thing you will see today. Now, I do love honey, but I prefer it in those little squeezable bottles shaped like a bear. The honey buzzard likes honey and bee larvae so much that it goes to this kind of extreme to get to the sweet stuff. It is thought that the denseness of the feathers and extra tough skin prevent the honey buzzard from getting stung. And that is quite possibly the most interesting thing you will see today. There's a little watering hole by my house where I like to go sometimes just to unwind. A place where everyone knows my name. Yeah, I mean, it isn't a pub, it's an actual watering hole. I'm thinking of opening up a chain of them. <laughs> Whether it's quenching a late night thirst, starting the day with some much needed hydration, or cooling off with a quick dip, come on down to Alfonso's Outback Watering Hole. A place where friends can gather. Yes, Alfonso's Outback Watering Hole, where the good times and refreshments flow like fresh spring water gurgling out of the tap. Whether you just want some time alone, or out on a date, or are ready to party hardy with the whole gang, Alfonso's Outback Watering Hole is the place for you. The place to gather 24 hours a day to wet your beak, moisten your scales, or simply quench your thirst. Alfonso's Outback Watering Hole is here for you. Watch for new locations coming to the Serengeti, the Amazon, the Mojave, and West Covina. Alfonso's Outback Watering Hole, where the parched come to party. The best thing that could ever happen to any of us is that we are loved as much as an animal loves the ball. It may be the purest form of love there is. My girl likes to jump. have stars on the glitzy and world-famous Hollywood Walk of Fame. There is Strongheart, a German Shepherd movie star of the 1920s, and Rin Tin Tin, another popular German Shepherd, matinee idol of the time. But do you know the third animal with a star? Is it A, Trigger, Roy Rogers' horse, B, Benji, C, Cheetah from the Tarzan movies, or D, Lassie? Now, they are all deserving, but do you know which one actually has a star? I'll tell you the answer when AFE Animal Edition continues.
Fun fact, only three animals have their stars on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, and they are all dogs. In addition to early screen star Strongheart and Rin Tin Tin, there is perhaps the biggest canine star of them all, Lassie. Only three? Come on, Hollywood. Some of the best actors in the world have been animals, literally and figuratively. Always look before you sit. It is one of my golden rules. I have kids. If you don't look, you may end up sitting on a cupcake or something. And in the wild, if you don't look, you could end up sitting face to face with a wild and highly venomous Eastern diamondback rattlesnake. And that is almost never a good thing. You guys look. I'm literally sitting face to face with a wild and highly venomous Eastern diamondback rattlesnake. Oh my. And I am afraid to move. I am frozen in my tracks right now. I don't even want to move my arms. Yeah, don't move your arms. All I did is sit down to take a little breather because it is about 95 degrees outside. And crawling out of the brush over to my left was this guy. And I don't know what to do. I guess you could try blowing on him. And try to blow on him to get him to move. So blowing doesn't seem to be working. Oh, he's not moving at all. What now? Oh, I'm gonna try to touch his tail to get him to move. Are we sure that's a good idea? Oh, I am shaking. Oh, he sees me. He sees me. Bad idea, bad idea, bad idea. Rattlesnakes are horrible lap pets. I do not want to move right now. We don't want you to. I am shaking. Us too. I need to find something to poke him with. Oh, shh. Oh, my God. What have I been saying about looking before you sit? This is the dangers of sitting in the wild. I'm not taking a moment just to observe your surroundings. Exactly. It's how you avoid rattlesnakes and cupcakes. Oh. Come on, go the other way. Go the other way. He's not listening to you. I don't know what to do, I think. Come on, go the other way. Yeah. Is he gone? Whoa. Bet he looks before he sits from now on. Our countdown of the top 10 great animal heists continues with number five. With bear school starting the very next day, the cubs were enjoying the last carefree days of summer. Mama bear's coming up here. Mama bear was busy gathering the cubs some school supplies. No, he's getting in my car. Give me a stick. Oh my God. A stick? Nah, you don't want to do that. No, get out of my car. The bear didn't want the car, just a backpack. No, give me my kid's backpack back. <laughs> The cubs are all ready for school. Number four. So, Bob, How did you, get you have just been caught breaking into the barn breaking and pulling hay off of the wagon. What do you have to say for yourself, Bob? I was hungry. And Gunny's in here. Bob, this is not cool. You are not allowed in here, nor are you. No remorse. Number three. While the vendor's away. Hey, you're gonna pay for that? Nope. Number two, the temptation was just too great. He figured if he left the coins, no one would notice. We will conclude our countdown later in the show. What do you say we dig deep into our files of classics and see what we have in the AFE Animal Edition Archive? You know, some people can't get past the special effects in early dinosaur movies. I, for one, think they are pretty darn realistic. And scary, too. What happened to this remote? 
He was trying to change the channel. Tell me what happened. Now every time he hiccups, the TV shuts off. Why are you ignoring me? August 6th, 1994. It had been raining earlier, but that didn't deter the kids from having some fun on the trampoline. It did deter Samson, however. <laughs> Ever wonder what it would feel like to get bit by a gator? Probably something like this. Yeah, that's not at all pleasant. <laughs> it is more than natural to be afraid of certain things, but when that fear is overpowering and maybe a little irrational, they call it a phobia. And they have really complicated names. For instance, allurophobia. <laughs> now, is allurophobia the irrational fear of A, sparrows, B, cats, C, alligators, or D, lemmings? Think you know the answer? Well, I will tell you when AFE Animal Edition continues. <music> Allurophobia is the overpowering and irrational fear of cats. <laughs> And with more than 25% of U.S. homes having at least one cat, it can make for some extremely uncomfortable situations. <laughs> Allurophobia is more common than you might think. Less common is lenonophobia. That is the fear of string. Cats almost never suffer from lenonophobia. What to do? Stop, no. Stop, no. And now, you know. <laughs> Our mailbox is overflowing, so what do you say we answer a few emails in the AFE Animal Edition inbox? Our first letter comes from Bonnie in Daly City, California. She writes, Dear Alfonso, are there any horse supermodels? Great question, Bonnie. And the answer is, of course there are. The, let's see, there's uh, Claudia Shetland. Tatiana Paddock, and probably the greatest horse supermodel of all time, Tiffany Withers. Whether she's trotting the fashion runways of Paris, posing for the cover of Equine Vogue, or galloping in the surf of Saint-Tropez, the life of a horse supermodel is a glamorous one. Dear Alfonso, why do some cats catch rats and others don't? Your pal, Anthony, Tulsa, Oklahoma. Great question, Anthony. And while cats are instinctual hunters, some domesticated cats don't go after mice and rats because they already have an endless supply of food in their dish. But another factor could be the size of the rat. That rat is huge. I know I wouldn't want to tangle with it. And Ray Ray feels the exact same way. In fact, he doesn't even mind if the rat takes his food. Because he knows you will refill it when the rat is done. So he's just gonna chill up here on the chair, thank you very much. He will leave the hunting to you. Jenny from Clarksville, Tennessee writes, Dear Alfonso, do goats get jealous? <laughs> Sure they do. I mean, everyone gets a little jealous once in a while, and it's hard not to get jealous if you happen to share a pen with Frankie Blue Eyes. Frankie Blue Eyes. How you doing, Frankie? Frankie Blue Eyes seems to get most of the attention, and he prefers it that way. Here's your 15 seconds of fame. Make it count. His personality, Frankie does. And his stablemate, Eddie, resents it just a little. But when Eddie sees an opportunity, he tries for some attention, too. Hi, handsome. Hi, handsome. Handsome? Oh, Frankie Blue Eyes is not gonna like that. <laughs> I hear a little jealousy in the background. <laughs> You do not want to incur the wrath of Frankie Blue Eyes. <laughs> Frankie Blue Eyes is a little insecure. And he's a snorter. <laughs> Frankie's a snorter. 
We love hearing from you, so keep those emails coming in, and I will answer as many as I can. Now, we all have our favorite breeds of dog, and one of the most popular are the Dachshunds. Dachshunds people love them because they've got big hearts, big smarts, and big personalities. And as for their legs, did I mention they have big hearts? <laughs> all Noodles wanted for Christmas was a brand new toy to chew on. And all Shotzi wanted for Christmas was the same thing she wanted every day of the year. Attention. If you love dachshunds as much as you love cutting edge technology, you've got to get yourself the all new Robo Dachshund. Robo Dachshund, the only dachshund that vacuums up its own dog hair. Cable and batteries not included. Dino, are you ready for it? Oh, ready? Dino's ready. Oh. Don't worry, still ready. Uh, you okay? You okay, real good. I got it. All me. Game on. That's mine. Here we go. Back off. Got this one. My shot. Hands off. I'm on it. My ball. Whew. Ping pong is exhausting. <laughs> it's a double dachshund swim lesson. Dachshunds aren't the strongest swimmers in the canine world because of their long body and teeny tiny legs. Some still love it though, so it is always good to have a lifeguard dachshund keeping an eye on the pups. Wait, Sort of looks like a couple of hot dogs floating in the pot. Man, I am really craving a hot dog right about now. Uh, what time's lunch again? This is called a dachshund wake-up call. Okay, wake him with another in 15 minutes. Hope you're paying attention to your favorite clips because very shortly, we are going to award one of them $1,000. We will also complete our top 10 countdown and take a look at our viral clip of the week. All this and more when AFE Animal Edition continues. believe that if you were in the right place at the right time and you were very patient, dinner would come to you. Nice catch, Bear. They are the videos that everyone is talking about and get shared over and over again. And the special ones become our viral clip of the week. They had set up their camera to record some incredibly beautiful eagles chowing down on some salmon and halibut remains. Spectacular, isn't it? But then, some of the food got tossed onto the camera. And then, an eagle started grabbing it and decided to... take off with it. I bet the view was incredible, had it not been for the eagle talon blocking it. Miles away, the eagle set the camera down and went back to live in large. Six weeks later, a family found the camera along the beach and returned it to the owner. They were amazed by what they saw, and it is now our viral clip of the week. If you love birds and you want them to hang around your yard, do what I did. Get yourself a bird feeder. And if you want other animals to hang around your yard, well, get yourself a bird feeder. Yeah, I don't even know why they call them bird feeders anyway. I mean, everybody eating. <laughs> I'm no ornithologist, but I'm pretty sure the animal drinking from this hummingbird feeder is not a hummingbird. But all that sweet, sugary goodness was too much of a temptation. And they hung it at the perfect level for him. I mean, if they didn't want him to have it, they should have put it higher, right? All gone. It is the early horse that gets the worm. I, I mean, guess the nectar. This chipmunk is in a real jam. How the heck am I gonna get him out of here? Get your hind leg in. Right there, get your knee in. That's what you gotta do. Come on, wiggle. Wiggle in there. All right, I gotta... 
I gotta stop doing this and help you out. I'm gonna break something. Well, I got him out this far, but he's stuck on the inside. Gotta push his little paws in. Hey, it's okay. All right, put this down and see if I can break something else. Good news, he did it. He broke him out of there. Quite the predicament. Oh my God. I cannot believe this is so cute. This is so cute. Oh, is it? Tell that to the hungry birds who have to go without seed. He is adorable. He's trying to eat them. <laughs> okay, fine. I guess it is the cutest thing ever. An unattended bird feeder full of sweet, sweet juice? There's really only one thing to say at a moment like this. Whee! Our bird feeder is currently feeding a moose. Then technically, it's a moose feeder. <laughs> They were out of bird seed, so they put chicken seed in there. And that should be fine, right? <laughs> they put that cone there to keep squirrels from getting the bird seed. But they didn't reckon with Charlie. You see, Charlie always has a plan B. And this basketball hoop is Charlie's plan B. All he's got to do is scale the pole, get himself ready, then launch himself straight over to Seed Town in three, two, one. Charlie does not have a plan C. We have been counting down our top 10 great animal heists, but before we reveal number one, let's take another look at the first nine. Number 10, Turkey takes a 10. Number nine, the canine cat chow larceny. Where are you going with my cat chow? Number eight, the masked mobile phone bandit. Number seven, puppy gonna cut you. Drop it! Number six, the granola bar grifter. <laughs> it's my granola bar. Number five, the backpack lift. No, give me my kid's backpack back. Number four, the hay bale heist. This is not cool. Number three, the fruit stand steal. Are you gonna pay for that? Number two, the money mouth grab. <laughs> and now on our countdown of the top 10 great animal heists, we proudly present number one. Once he learned to work the automatic doors, all laws went right out those doors. With the bag of chips. <laughs> that is number one. We have seen an amazing array of awesome videos, but the one that we got the biggest kick out of and the recipient of $1,000 is Ping Pong Wiener Dog from Amanda Goff from Pass Christian, Mississippi. Watch out. Hands off. I'm on it. Mubble. And Amanda, please buy your dachshund a paddle so he can return serve. <laughs> I hope you had even half as good a time as we did sharing these amazing videos with you. Nothing I would rather do. And if I'm not mistaken, I think in addition to having fun, we may have also learned something along the way. We learned that crocodiles are nature's jacuzzi. <laughs> <laughs> We learned that cats really do need all nine lives. We learned the coolest camels in North Carolina are Gaylord and Gladys. Cats are horrible interior decorators. Jeremy needs a stronger shampoo. And that everyone loves hanging out at Alfonso's Outback Watering Hole. Coming soon to West Covina. But most of all, we learn that the secret to a happy life is taking time to laugh, wonder, and enjoy all that animals bring to our lives. Thanks for watching. I can't wait to do this again soon.